Of all the most inconvenient things in life, very few pack in as much frustration and confusion as. <laughs> very few pack in as much frustration as a power outage. You see, even if you're not afraid of the dark, you can't escape the sense of paralysis it brings. In many ways, it leaves you powerless. An experience perfectly summed up with a single word: doomso. Doomso is a common expression used in my native country of Ghana, and it, it's 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 an expression which is used to. Encapsulate the anger and frustrations power outages brings. You see, in 2015 alone, Ghana experienced an incredible 159 days worth of power outages. To put that into perspective, that means almost half a million babies were born in darkness. This. Of course, it's a far cry from what we experience here in America, where most of us take electricity for granted. But while electricity lights up our lives, it is simultaneously casting a shadow over that of our planet. Our insatiable appetite for electricity, be it to power our homes, our phones, our computers, this energy gluttony. It's what's keeping coal power plants alive today, and coal, as we all know, is anything but environmentally friendly. Our best antidote against this is to use less electricity, and the good news is we are. Light bulbs today consume far less energy than they have ever before, and as people, we are increasingly becoming energy conscious too. Quick. Show of hands. How many of us in here, at any point today, checked that little battery icon on our phones? Don't be shy. How many of you are doing it right now? <laughs> you see, we're all guilty of this because we've all become conscious of how our phones use energy, and as an energy geek, that really excites me. Because think about it. If all of us in this room care this much about something as small as how our phones use energy, then surely, when it comes to some of the biggest energy consumers in our lives, like our homes, we must care even more, right? About 2,252 times more, to be exact. That is, on average, how much more energy per year your home uses compared to the phone in your pocket right now. Yet, I am willing to wager that most, if not all, of us in here know more about how our phones use energy than our homes. In fact, I'm willing to go even further and say we're all oblivious to how much energy our homes have used today. How much energy they used yesterday or even last week? This is a room filled with people excited about discovering new directions. Yet, none of us are paying attention to the energy use that would light up the way. Speaking of moving in new directions, so I was on Twitter the other day. And I came across a rather interesting tweet, which simply asked, "Was Rome built in darkness?" Hashtag Doomso Mustafa. The sentiment is pretty clear: Doomso stifles progress. But the engineer in me couldn't help but also overanalyze this simple tweet, because you see, the light bulb. Wasn't invented until the 1800s, so technically speaking, yes, Rome was built in darkness. In fact, for them, doom so happened every single time the sun set. But even more fascinating is that the average home around that time period looked something like this, very different from what you and I live in today. In fact, when it comes to structural stability, 
basic amenities and watching Netflix, your home is light years ahead of this one. Yet when it comes to intelligence, the ability to make sense of the world around them and the people living within, well, you might as well pack your bags and move into this. Because just like this house, your home and millions of homes across America cannot think for themselves. Because of this, we live in homes which keep the lights on in empty rooms and homes which continue to warm and cool our living spaces even when no one is at home. Our homes today waste so much energy because you and I can't be bothered to pay attention and our homes can't do anything about it because they cannot think for themselves. Or at least they haven't ever before. But what if they could? Imagine your bedroom waking you up at just the right time in your sleep cycle. As you crawl out of bed, the lights automatically adjust to complement the natural light coming in. All around your home, sensors monitor your vital signs, proactively adjusting indoor temperature and air quality to suit your needs while shutting down appliances and services not in use to conserve energy. This is but a snapshot of a smart home experience, one where your home takes care of you and also cares about its own energy use. I work to realize such a future, and I do it by giving your home the ability to think and learn for itself. But how do you take a dumb home like yours <laughs> and, teach it, and teach it new tricks? Most of us in here have uttered the words, hey Google, or hey Alexa, or even hey Siri, and asked it for the weather or to make it bark like a dog. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> you see, I take the same class of algorithms, which makes that possible, and I use it to teach your home how to use energy more efficiently. The only difference it's unlike Google or Alexa, which pays attention to what you have to say. The algorithms I write pay attention to what your home has to say. Because you see, although your home might be dumb, it doesn't mean it has nothing to say. Quite the opposite. It has a lot to say. This, for example, is the voice of your fridge. And this, the voice of your laundry machine. To you and I, these are nothing but a bunch of squiggly lines on a screen. But to the algorithms I write, these same voices whisper stories of our most innate energy habits. They are essentially a bunch of high-tech snitches which tell on us. And if we listen close enough, we can start to find trends and patterns and correlations within these voices and use that to unlock our energy secrets. Secrets like our favorite temperature preferences, our laundry routines, even our cooking habits. Using these insights, we can now start forming rather accurate and compelling narratives of our energy use. Narratives which we can now refashion in energy conscious ways. But what happens when technology knows more about us than we do? Especially this idea of our homes learning things about us that we don't actively choose to share. Are we all ready for a future where everything in our home talks back at us? From our kids, to our spouse, to now our toaster? <laughs> Bringing such an invasive technology into an intimate space like our homes is understandably a little creepy. And we have every reason to be cautious. Building security and trust are going to be huge challenges moving forward because in the wrong hands, this technology can be used for some truly destructive things. But the benefits smart homes bring into our lives are worth solving these challenges which make us feel uncomfortable. Because in the right hands, this same technology can be used to build something truly 
worth paying attention to. A sustainable energy future. Thank you.